Hello, Snackers. My name is Matt DiNapoli. I am a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. And I'm Kareem Iskander. I'm the lead developer um, technical advocate with uh, Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 73 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about APIs and some cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And the cool thing we're going to be talking about today is Cisco U with our guest, Ashley Roach. And our friend as well. And, and our friend as well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ashley didn't do quite 22, or all, all 22 with uh, yeah. You have to subtract you around, Mexico yeah, were, each time. Yeah, you were yeah. around for a number. Maybe 15 It's not as first Cisco Live, we'll say that. <laughs> um, but we're, we're glad to have you back in the fold. And yeah. um, you're, can you g give us an introduction of yourself and what you're doing now? Sure, good to be here. Uh, and hello, everyone there, and hello in the virtual world as well. Uh, so my name is Ashley Roach. Uh, I'm a director of product management in the Learning and Certifications Group. Uh, I'm heading up a team of technical advocates and product managers, and we've been hard at work over the last year building um, the Cisco U product. And so this is an evolution of our learning platforms. Uh, that help everyone get certified. <laughs> Lots of folks who have been certified know all those platforms, and now we're making it even better. Um, in addition, we're looking at incorporating things like solution learning, role learning, uh, in addition to the regular certification stuff that everyone's familiar with. Uh, and I think, I think one of the biggest pieces, too, in, in our value proposition is the community piece to Cisco U. You want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah, so when we talked to our community and did our, our sort of product research into what gaps we had, how we wanted to adapt and evolve our learning, we we've settled on three pillars. One was uh, around guidance. Right. So I'll get to community in a second. <laughs> uh, most folks, it's, a, it's hard to learn, right? So you have to find the right material. You, you have to figure out, is this the right amount of time for me to do the learning? Um, what topics do I want to learn? What's relevant to my career, et cetera, et cetera. So guidance was one big pillar. Another big pillar was depth. So we've been doing learning uh, for our community for 29 years. And, um, you know, People who are CCIEs all the way down to the entry level certs are very, I think, proud and, and appreciative of what we have shared with them and then how they have been able to grow in their careers thanks to certifications in particular. And so that community, we have a community platform. Uh, we have over a million uh, registered users on our community, uh, Cisco Learning Network community platform. And so we're looking at ways to embed that community into our learning uh, and into that platform. So looking forward to evolving over time uh, and can talk a little bit about what we're doing here as well. But uh, yeah, I think I think to me and, and I, I think we talked about this is, you know, as as an advocate, being able to reach to the technical community out there and being able to work with them as well as learn from them uh, while I'm learning myself is a is a huge thing at Cisco U. And I'm definitely looking forward to having that as part of uh, what we do. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, I always considered developer advocacy as a, as a point of education. And if we're being honest about it, it tends to be something that we hit at the at the top of the funnel, right? Right. And um, when we were part of uh, learning and certifications for that bit, where we launched the DevNet certs, um, it was really interesting to see behind the curtain of how certification exams were created, how the uh, courses were actually put together, and be part of that experience that we hadn't been part of before. Um, so, kind of knowing that behind the scenes is super helpful. But I'm curious, as far as um, Cisco, you. As, as a platform is concerned, what are the differentiators between what people have experienced up until this point and what they can expect potentially moving forward? Yeah, That's good. yeah. so probably the biggest differentiator uh, and what we're trying to get to is, for those of you who've been around Cisco for a while, there's lots of different web properties to learn from. Um, just that learning and certifications manages. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Uh, we're, we're trying to bring that together. So U does not stand for Cisco Unified or anything like that. <laughs> like in my mind, I think about it, you know, one of the, the value props is that. But it's more about you, right? A play on that. University, so education. It's not Cisco University, though, but it is Cisco U. Um, so that's one of the things. I think where we really, I'd say, are the most differentiating comes to our hands-on labs. Yeah. 
Uh, we have these live environments that help people who are trying to get certified get hands-on experience with you know, virtualized, actual physical hardware where appropriate or, or necessary. And so you can remote in, and especially in the post-pandemic world, or what, I don't know if we're even there, honestly, but in that community um, uh, or in that environment, you need those capabilities uh, similar to like the DevNet sandbox, we have things like that right. for all the certification learning. I think I think for me too, the the one of the biggest thing as a technical person is the adjacent technologies that we're bringing in, mm -hmm. right? So we're so used to like learning on um, on our platform, Cisco's platform, just what Cisco has to offer. But with the evolution of our technology, you know, look at hybrid cloud. Um, in order to learn hybrid cloud, you need to understand what's going on with Terraform, and you need to be able to see what HashiCore is doing. And so what we're doing with Cisco U is being able to um, collaborate with you know, HashiCore, AWS, and bring in all of that technical knowledge within that learning path for you to have all of that end-to-end -end in one area. So I think that's a huge thing. But I'm going to shut up, and, and, and I'm going to give Ashley some time here to give you a sneak peek at what Cisco U is. We just launched it last week. And um, for those who are online, you can get added to uh, our early access list. Ashley's going to show you how to do that. And for you guys are at Cisco Live, head over to the Cisco U activation to play with it if you'd like for a chance to win something. Cool. How much time do I have? Uh, you, have you have about six or seven minutes. So which is okay, perfect. cool. Pretty good. Um, so this is the rapid fire demo uh, <laughs> for Cisco U. So first of all, you know the UX itself is really beautiful. We love what, what has come up. But we're basing a lot of this on uh, AI and recommendations, sort of AI ML technology. And so we can avoid like a cold start scenario. Cold start is a blank page, you know, like when you sign up for Twitter and it's like crickets because you don't follow anybody. We don't want you to do that when you come in here. So in our case, you can pick the different kinds of um, mechanisms that you like to learn in. So whether that's podcasts or e-learning. Uh, but additionally, I'm just going to pick these ones, e-learning and cloud computing. And what that does is it starts to inform the system my, about my interests. And so we can really try to start that guidance and personalization on the platform uh, immediately for you. And so you can see, for example, I have hybrid cloud already <laughs> added to my list, uh, a podcast that's already added to my list. And as I dig down deeper here on the For You page, and the reason why we call it For You is literally because it's recommending content for you. Uh, we have these four learning paths that we've started with. And this is just a preview, really. Like, it's early access. So uh, we want to build this with the community. We don't want to just say, hey, this is the thing. Uh, and so that's why we're bringing this out so early to show to everyone. And, uh, and so I'll get these other recommendations we're pulling in from the community. So you can see, like, uh, podcasts from the Cisco Learning Network and upcoming events that are also hosted via Cisco Learning Network. So I think one cool thing is you can pop into the actual learning and see what it looks like. So for those of you who've used um, Cisco Digital Learning, uh, this is the evolution of that, really. So this UX, uh, this experience, uh, we're really, really excited about and proud of. Uh, I think it looks awesome. Um, so hopefully you all do too. <laughs> it does. It uh, looks great, Ashley. Uh, so let me, you know, Kareem mentioned HashiCorp. And so we have embedded HashiCorp, and this might make me log in real quick. Oh, good. Uh, we've actually embedded HashiCorp content that they developed, co-developed with us as part of this learning path. Um, so like, I'll play this video. And this person, uh, Steven, is an engineer and architect from HashiCorp. So that's really awesome to be able to leverage those partnerships, bring their content in, help them, and they can uh, help us as well. The other piece I want to talk about is when we talk about this adjacent technology concept. So Cisco doesn't live in isolation. We live in an ecosystem of other technologies. So HashiCorp is uh, one of those things in Terraform. But another thing is, for example, as you know here in the DevNet community, things like Docker, right? Uh, we don't necessarily need to build all that content ourselves. And so we've partnered with um, a very uh, well-known company called Skillsoft to bring in this additional content uh, that's uh, created by them and by experts that they employ. 
So here's, for example, video tutorial on uh, different Docker components. The last thing, of course, is the, uh, the lab feature. And so I, I want to quickly pop over to that. And what I'm gonna, in order to do that, I'm going to use the CCNA course. Um, and so I'm just going to pop over here to another learning path. And we'll pop over here into starting a switch. <laughs> and uh, what this does is it spins up an environment right, for you immediately to be able to start working through these tutorials. So this may take you know, 30 seconds, something like that. But it's, it's a live environment for you to be able to go through and learn how to do um, switch configuration and so on. Most of you may already know that. But <laughs> for those of you who don't yeah. online, uh, you know, this is where you want to come. Can they do switch configuration with NetConf and RESTConf? <laughs> <laughs> they actually can as part of the network automation course. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So here you go. Here's you know, iOS right here. And you can have a ball. So that's all super cool, but uh, I also mentioned the community. So we're, we're starting to bring in other art aspects of community, like here I can come to this page and see all of the communities that I can join. Over time, we're going to make this more and more robust. Um, but then last but not least, we have a page where you can come back to called My Learning. And so we're going to develop this over time, where maybe we'll have metrics and things like that. Uh, to allow you to understand how you're learning, how you're progressing, but also pull in your certifications and badges that you've uh, earned. And that's really important because, first of all, if something, a cert is becoming close to be expired, like you need to know that. <laughs> um, and really, uh, this is a convenient way to do that instead of hopping out to different platforms within our ecosystem. Another piece, the last piece I do want to talk about here is actually goal setting. And so this is just an example of what we're thinking. But being able to set a goal wow. against learning specifically, um, where perhaps we can do things like integrate with your calendar, send you reminder messages or emails. Um, in this case, we're just showing how you can set a goal. Say you want to finish this learning path in three months. Because it's got this much content, wow. you can you need to spend 10 hours a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> so make sure you do that uh, in order to achieve your goals. So that's really the, the, the quick and dirty demo. Uh, hopefully, I hit the, no, hit the mark on well. time. No, you're doing You know, I, I do have to say, I know that you and Kareem have been working on this for months. And so you guys are pretty well versed in it. It's probably old hat to you. But seeing this for the first time, the, the planning, the in integrated environments, the um, the suggestions, all of it is just impressive. I mean, I know having gone through some certifications and going through that process, like you said, even looking up when your um, certification is expiring, right. I, wouldn't tell, <laughs> I couldn't tell you where the URL is today. I'd have to do some homework to figure that out. Yeah. So those, consolidating all of that is just fantastic. And you know, I, it didn't hit me until you were sitting here that the U could stand for university, but it's also you. Yeah, <laughs> you, me, what was it? What was your tagline? No, we're not, yeah. doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that on stage. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, and we just got started. Like, this is just released last week. Um, there's a lot more features that are going to go into this, and I, I know we talk about them all the time. One of the things that, as an engineer, that I look at, at all the time is that as I'm working, I don't want to have to go find the answer in an entire course. So we have this idea of moment, moment of need learning, where you can go in, do a search, and with the advanced search option, that we have in the platform, we can essentially populate the, oh, I can troubleshoot my switch, or I can't, you know, my API call my to whatever to my Meraki network is failing. Why? So we can be able to provide that moment of need answers to you on the spot. So that's another great feature that I'm looking forward to. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, but I do actually believe, unfortunately, Ashley, that is okay. all the time we have. I got for one today. more plug. Oh, you do have one okay, more plug. Okay, so this is in early access. So we want. We're building a waiting list uh, for folks to be able to come in and work with us to build out the rest of the platform and all the different features. Probably the easiest way um, is we'll, we'll embed something in the, for the folks online, like a QR code. But right now, if you go to u.cisco.com, uh, you can sign in, and then it'll prompt you to go register. Additionally, if you're here at Cisco Live, just step next door to the booth, and we have a scavenger hunt um, in our area that allows you to step through this uh, product on your own and get your hands on it a little bit more. Um, Before we let you go, I'm going to put you, you on the spot. Okay. 
we ask all our guests this, for those who are familiar with our session, our episodes. If you had to be or pick to be a superpower, what would that be and why? And you're putting him on the spot. I, am. I forgot I didn't, about the question. I, didn't I even forgot it was the I first didn't even time prep on. him for this. You didn't prep me. <laughs> a superpower? Yeah. Wow. Uh, you can build a platform, but you can't answer superpower questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's, that's hard. The superpower uh, would be coming up with a superpower. <laughs> Love. I'll be, I'll be my superpower. <laughs> All right. I yeah. like that one. <laughs> Captain Hug. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, right. thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Snackers, for another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Join us next week or in 30 seconds. Thank you, uh, For our next episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>